When it is mentioned at all in China, the date, June the 4th, 1989, is referred to simply as the time of the incident. Much of the west of the world remembers it as the date of the massacre in Tiananmen Square. Now, in the 20 years since then, China's economic and political landscape has seen unprecedented change. But despite the progress, one question still preys on the minds of critics, observers and citizens of China. Will Beijing ever again turn its guns on its own people? I'm Taymor Navili, and on this edition of 101 East, we look at the legacy of Tiananmen. The Chinese government has done its best to erase memories of the 1989 protests. Media discussion of the events in Tiananmen Square is strictly controlled, and internet access to websites mentioning them is blocked. And those that took part still face police harassment and restrictions on where they can live and who they can talk to. Tony Chang reports. The Gate of Heavenly Peace, Tiananmen. For centuries, the entrance to the seat of power in what, for many, is the greatest civilization on earth. Outside China, however, Tiananmen means something else. In April of 1989, large numbers of students started to demonstrate on the square. Initially, they simply wanted to commemorate Hu Yabang, an official who'd fallen from grace for his drives against corruption and a push for democratic reform. Throughout May, the momentum grew a hunger strike amongst the students who had now grown in number to hundreds of thousands. And outside Beijing, similar protests. Shanghai, Xi'an, 400 cities in all. And then, after a tense standoff with the military, soldiers moved in on the night of June the 3rd. In the massacre that followed, hundreds if not thousands were killed, many more injured. 20 years later, the authorities are still firmly in control. This was the reception that met us when we tried to film. Police in plain clothes, preventing us from getting onto the square. We've just been told to get off the square, which is about 100 meters down to the right. And this is about as close as we can get to Tiananmen. We're almost on the exact spot where 20 years ago, the man stood challenging the tanks. It's quite clear the government is incredibly sensitive as this 20th anniversary rolls around and there's going to be no commemoration or even recognition that the Tiananmen protests happened at all. The stories that follow are united by what happened, but this is not the story of those traumatic hours. Rather, the way it changed the lives of those involved over the last two decades. Jiang Qisheng was one of the movement's leaders and served two jail terms because of his involvement. Today, he lives in a tiny one-room apartment that he shares with his sick wife, about 30 minutes' walk from Tiananmen Square. A former professor of aeronautics, he scrapes a living writing articles that can only be published overseas. In the last 20 years, it's the only work he can find. But does he think the protesters actually achieved anything? We were calling for freedom of the press, freedom of association, an end to censorship, and none of this have been achieved. Today, we still have restrictions on free speech, free press, and political rights. And another big thing for us was opposing corruption. This is far from being achieved. Today's corruption is a hundred times worse. In the years that followed, many accused the students of going too far. In the face of almost complete anarchy across the country, didn't they force the government's hand? Who would have believed the Communist Party would kill people on the streets during the day? It had never happened. No one ever believed that they would kill people. No one expected it. And who would have known the consequences would continue this far? Mr. Jiang took me outside to show me the police car that had taken up residence outside his apartment. They do let me out to buy food, he says, but they follow me all the way out and all the way back home. The protests of 89 also marked a power struggle within the party. Reformers wanted to open all aspects of life in China, while the conservatives were keen not to lose control. The crackdown showed the conservatives had won, and party secretary Zhao Ziyang was put under house arrest for the rest of his life. 
His assistant, Bao Tong, was charged with revealing state secrets and given a sentence of seven years, the highest ranking official to be charged following June the 4th. 20 years later, his movements are still restricted, mainly to this apartment down the road from the square. Since the Olympics, however, journalists have been allowed to visit. But after years of imprisonment and house arrest, did he regret not towing the party line? My thoughts were liberated, no longer controlled or restricted by the party's rules. I could think freely. It was a big opportunity to rethink my ideas about China and how it should change. And those years of reflection have left him with a very different view. Although China has seen two decades of relative stability, he thinks the forces that led to the protests are still there. The Tiananmen issue won't resolve back then, although people point to the fact that it hasn't happened again in the last 20 years. That's a not correct. There are thousands of mini Tiananmen in every city, town and village across China every year. Those economic improvements are clear on the square itself. Thousands come to pay homage every day. Farmers and workers for whom travel is a new luxury. But even here, the evidence of the wealth gap is clear to see. The middle classes that have emerged in the last two decades are out enjoying a day in the park. And this is where I met Gao Hongming. He was moved by the suppression of the protest to form the China Democratic Party, in part because he felt change wouldn't come from within. The party was banned and he was given a sentence of eight years in jail. But with the evidence of 20 years of prosperity and stability all around him, didn't it prove the Communist Party was right? The right to form political parties and freedom of speech, those are the two core issues for reform in China. They are essential for change to happen. Without them, all the recent advances, including the economic advances and increasing freedoms, amount to no concrete progress. One thing that hasn't changed much on the square is the image of Chairman Mao, looking across the square to the mausoleum, where his body still lies in state. But the great helmsman would barely recognize the country he founded 60 years ago. Modern China has opened up in recent years, and questioning the party no longer has to go on behind closed doors. Mao's iconic image is re-examined today in many forms, as Wu Wenjian, an artist, shows me during a tour of a modern art gallery here in Beijing. Around the corner is a statue of Mao himself, hunting. Both benign and aggressive, the statue captures the conflicting views in modern China about the chairman. Mr. Wu was a worker on June the 4th, a bystander as the tanks rolled through the streets of Beijing. For that, he got five years in jail. Since then, he hasn't been able to find a job excluded for his past crimes. So he started to paint abstracts of the events of that day. But while the ironic images of Mao are acceptable to the censor, his pictures aren't permitted to go on display. Nonetheless, doesn't the fact that people can now criticize the party indicate some sort of change? The so-called changes compared with the past are all about economic prosperity. But that's superficial, just a bubble that could burst. And it's all a result of the party's propaganda. And Tiananmen wasn't the only square that saw protests. Master Sheng Guan used to be a publisher and led the protests in the center of Xi'an. Now he's a Buddhist monk. The crackdown here wasn't nearly as harsh. But as news filtered out from Beijing, the protesters quickly slipped away. He tried to evade the police by traveling to different parts of the country, but after six months, he was caught and jailed. In jail, he had time to reflect upon the struggle for freedom, a struggle he still committed to today. In this world, anyone in any place should have the freedom to choose their own God. This is very important. Religious freedom is the foundation of all other freedoms. If you can't think your own thoughts, what freedom do you have? But in China, we don't have this right.
And even in this holy place, one of the earliest Buddhist monasteries in China, freedom is relative. As we film, the authorities that monitor the temple come to double check his credentials. Religion is the opium of the masses, and it's kept under strict controls. And for this spiritual man, the rich bounty of the last 20 years hides an emptiness that hasn't been filled. Why is eating so important to the Chinese? The mouth has more functions than just eating, speaking for example. But in China, you're not allowed to speak. These are the testimonies of those involved in the protests 20 years ago. In that time, China has emerged as a giant on the world stage. But other freedoms haven't followed. 20 years after the protests on Tiananmen Square, these people are still haunted by the events of that one day. June the 4th may not be commemorated or even discussed in modern China, but the scars it left behind have far from healed. The Tiananmen protests were the first in a series of events that saw change come across the world as the Soviet Union split apart and the Iron Curtain fell. But here in China, change comes very slowly and the Communist Party is still quite clearly in control. Well, after the break, we'll discuss the impact the events at Tiananmen Square have had on contemporary China. Stay watching 101 East.